How's everybody doing today? I'm between you and lunch, so I apologize about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll move fast. Uh, by show of hands, how many people own uh, a Google Home device or an Amazon Echo device? Oh, quite a few. Uh, looks like a little bit over half. Uh, keep your hands up. Uh, how many of you have read the user usage agreement or the privacy policy? <laughs> I think we got one? Nice work. So let's kick this off with a demo. That way when it fails, uh, you can all feel empathy for me for the rest of the time. Let me do this so that you can see what it is I'm doing over here. Let me switch my displays. Arrangement, mirror. We up there. Coming up. Sorry, I was playing CTF earlier and I think I might have too many things uh, running. All right, here we go. Hey Siri, read my note from today. I found one item. Your note from today called Welcome Besides Attendees says, Alexa, read my conferences list. You have one item on your conferences list. Okay, Google, what is on my Besides list? Your shopping list has one item. Hey Siri, read my note from today. I found one item. Your note from today called Welcome Besides Attendees says, Alexa, read my conferences list. You have one item on your conferences list. Okay, Google, what is on my B-sides list? There is one item on your shopping list. Hey Siri, read my note from today. Okay, they could go on forever. I'm sure of that. <laughs> Switch my displays back. I didn't even start a VM in that room. Like, I don't know why this computer's struggling so hard. Sorry about that. All right, good. I, did. I made a recording of this ahead of time because I figured it was going to fail, but it uh, actually didn't. So, applause. <laughs> um, so, this was inspired by a popular video on the internet by uh, Dan R.L. So how did I do this? Well, a magician never reveals their tricks. But good thing I'm not a magician. I'm an engineer, but not that kind of engineer. Um, I did all the setup for this from my phone. So I basically did an Apple Note, a Google Shopping List, and an Amazon List. The thing you need to get this to you work... You can share your shopping list by opening the list in the Google Home app, tapping the share button, and adding the person you want to share it with. The thing you need to do to get this to work is to use a little bit of nature, like the reeds and the bees. Um, you see, when I said uh, read, like you would read a book, it kept pronouncing it red, like the color red. And um, initially, oh man. No, it's that it's, that it's not loading my pictures. Um, uh, so, uh, so it would say red, like the color red, and initially I had uh, B-sides as one of the words, as, as like one single word, and it kept on saying B-sides. So I did have to train my phone to respond to, is the slides not coming up at all? Pull 
this up. So initially, when I, I put in the word like B sides as a single word, it was saying bus sides, and I didn't really like that, so I changed it to B. I did have to train my phone to respond to the Google Home uh, voice to get that full loop going. So to do this, you have to turn off the settings uh, for at least 10 seconds and then turn it back on. This is going to prompt uh, the teaching of the voice. Then I had to say, okay, Google, say, hey, Siri, a bunch of times. I'm so excited. I have a question for her. Hey, Siri, want to dance? I'll need to access your MeFit data to do this. Is that okay? The MeFit data? <laughs> um, I did get the Google Home to say it about uh, two of the five times uh, that I asked it. So now it knows my voice and um, it actually knows the Google Home voice. So at this point, I think I'm going to unplug those so that they don't go off all the time. <laughs> okay, we're just going to go to Activity Monitor and kill everything. Go by memory. Firefox is probably the culprit. Quit. Okay, my name is Aaron Blythe. I'm the lead organizer for DevOps KC, a meetup that I've run for the last five years uh, that meets monthly. Also, we're working on our third uh, DevOps Days KC, which is a conference coming up this October, which you should check out. Um, you should also check out the video from last year's event uh, at sizzledevopsdayskc.org. I currently work at New Relic, which is an awesome software as a service uh, company that gives you incredible insight into your software. So the most common use case in my house is to ask these devices to make animal sounds. This is my two-year-old daughter, Lila. So before I get too deep into the analysis of the traffic, I do want to go over the functionality of these devices for my common use cases. The Google Home probably hits the mark the most. So as far as like price point, uh, the phone costs way too much, but we all have to have them for Siri. But when you ask what sound does a pig make, it doesn't respond uh, with any voice uh, or uh, sound type of stuff. It just gives you a list of a bunch of web pages. Uh, the Alexa, the price point's around $50, but if you get it on a Black Friday sale, it's about $30. And when you ask something like, what does a pig say? It responds back with, I'm sorry, I only know English at the moment. I'll try to learn some animal languages, which is annoying to the kids. For the Google Home, same price point, it's about $50. And um, when you ask, what sound does a pig make? Uh, it works. You also say, what does a pig say? And that works too. 
Um, my finding so far is that the Google Home is a little bit more natural language processing, and uh, you have to be very uh, discreet on what you put in for uh, the Alexa. So let's go to my tests. Uh, the way I view this is to start with my devices. Data flows through to my router, but there's also uh, an agreement that goes on uh, that I have with these companies. The data then flows to the companies that are providing the services. This also completes the transaction that's part of the agreement for the data. So I'm going to start with the router and move counterclockwise around uh, each of the components. The first question I'm asking is what traffic is leaving my house? So I'm going to start with the Echo Dot. So I have many Amazon devices. I've got a couple of Echoes, some Kindle tablets, Fire Sticks for watching TV. I don't have cable. I only have over the air and um, streaming devices. So all these dev devices connect to my Wi-Fi. So I had to figure out which device was the one that I wanted to hone in on. I believe the first device I ever connected to my network was listed as Amazon, and then all the devices after that say Amazon, and then dash nine numbers or characters. I don't know what that, those numbers or characters mean. I don't think it's a MAC address or anything, but since this is a, a security conference, not a hacker conference, I did black, uh, uh, white all that out so that you can't see it. So my initial analysis starts with the access time. I did things on the devices to see how often it's sending things back from the log on my router. What I observed with the Echo, for the most part, that it only seems to be sending out requests when that keyword is used. Then I moved on to looking at the domains. The first set of domains I'm mostly fine with. Here we have the Amazon.com domains, Pandora, and Spotify. I did have to look up AmazonCRL.com. However, this is listed as being owned by Amazon. So a, a small tangent on who is. This tool is essential when you're trying to do analysis uh, such as this as far as what's going on. If you're a fan of Krebs on security, he's been talking about how the GDPR recently, that's the um, EU's general data protection regulation, is kind of going after who is. It sucks. Um, ICANN is scrambling on this and possibly it's going to take about a year to get the changes made and then over the course of that time they're going to have to uh, pay a bunch of fines. So that sucks. Anyways, um, the ones I was not sure about were these three. We'll start with the cloud front. Um, I did check that the, the URLs that were being uh, used from the device actually need authentic, uh, authentication and this is owned by Amazon. It's, it's simply their CDN. I still have not been able to figure out uh, why it's, uh, the Echo is actually sending data to Google, and that's one that I'm still uh, trying to figure out. So if you want to come see me in the CTF room after this, maybe we can try to figure that out. And then the final domain is also registered to Amazon. So let's move on to the Google Home Mini. The Google Home Mini sends information much more frequently, and um, at this initial level, does not seem to be bound by uh, uh, when or, whether or not I'm using the keyword. As I just had it sitting there and I was updating this log, I was seeing uh, more traffic go out. So these domains don't surprise me that much. We've got Google domains, we've got Pandora. These are the ones that were of interest to me. So starting with the first one, which is redirector.gvt1.com, a quick Google search would make you think something was uh, seriously wrong. So uh, as you read some of these things, I've got a possible infection, a uh, sign of a virus, uh, how to remove this. So uh, usually when I do this quick Google search, I don't actually click on any of these links. But it turns out that the domain is actually registered to Google, which you would think that Google, when I did the search, would have better SEO <laughs> on this so that I didn't get freaked out about that. Anyways, let's move on. The P-CDN, uh, was a, I did a quick look up to find out that that was Pandora, and this was followed by Triton Digital. I did a who is on Triton um, and noticed that uh, some of the information was masked, but the organization is called Stream the Wor World. It's all one word. So when I go to Crunchbase, which is where you go to look up uh, startups and tech companies, 
It looks like the organization Stream the World was actually acquired by Triton Digital. Um, both of these companies seem legit. It's just surprising that traffic is going to them. Um, so Triton calls themselves the industry standard for digital audio. So it's surprising, but it's not that surprising. We also had TuneIn. Uh, uh, traffic was going there. And so that leaves one more place where the, uh, the traffic is going. And this is sbscorecardresearch.com. So I read some things up on this site. Um, and they say that they try to gather data in aggregate and not on individuals. There were some places that say that the data is only stored for about 90 days. However, what if I want out? Like, what if I don't want to participate in this? They do have an opt-out policy. However, it appears to be very browser-based. Um, from their uh, documentation, it says, please note that the browser opt-out mechanism linked above are cookie-based. If you delete or block or otherwise restrict cookies, the opt-out policy might not be effective. Additionally, because different computers and different internet browsers require their own versions of the opt-out cookie, you may need to perform this opt-out process on any computer and browser that you want to be opted out of. These are listening devices. I don't really have a browser that I can go in and set these cookies. Not only that, this is just super annoying because anytime I use the internet and I'm logged in, I have to go and actually connect and uh, set up all these things. And if I'm trying to pro uh, protect other things by blocking cookies, then I can't block this. Pretty annoying. So the Echo Dot wins this round. I'm still not sure why it's sending information to Google, but other than that, it's pretty clean. So next up, we have the clients. And the question I'm asking here is, how much data is being sent and how often is it being sent? So to do this test, I used my Mac as a Wi-Fi point for all of the devices. I plugged in the Ethernet cable uh, to my Mac and that frees up my network card so that I can uh, take the devices and connect them in through this Wi-Fi and then that will go out to the internet. Then I used Wireshark to look at the data that was flowing through this. So we'll start with the Echo Dot. My first test I asked Alexa, what is the weather? Which is an appropriate question given um, what's going on up here in the north. Um, the pattern that we see is that uh, it, it spikes up, it makes that initial request, and uh, the packet sizes are a little bit um, on the bigger side. I used DIG to look up some of the IP addresses that it was sending to, and, it, and all of them ended up being Amazon assets like you would expect. Then our favorite question in my house, uh, Alexa, what sound does a pig make? Very similar pattern that it's, it's recording my voice, it's sending that out uh, to Amazon, it's getting a request back, and we've got uh, decent sized packets. So then I wanted to see kind of a baseline. What happens when it's just running and I'm not interacting with it? Uh, on these screens, you see that the traffic is much lower and what I did was for three minutes, I was just silent and let it run and looked at all the traffic. And then I turned the TV on for three minutes to see if it was picking up any of that uh, chatter. And then not shown here, the other test I did was I read in my normal voice some uh, hardcore rap lyrics to see what would happen, um, you know, to see if it would pick up on anything. Uh, it didn't, it, very similar results. So uh, back to the Google Home for a similar test. Again, with the what's the weather, we see a spike up. It sends the traffic off, and we're um, at much higher packet sizes. One thing I noticed that was interesting was where it was sending the, uh, the, the traffic to is 1e100.net. So you can look this up on Google. They're pretty uh, excited about it, right? Because if you know the history behind Google, like when I was a kid, we would say Google. That's the, the number with 100 zeros after it, right? And that's spelled um, G-O-O-G-O-L. So they actually have this domain uh, registered to Google, and they've got a whole story about it um, on their site. 
The rest of the traffic was going to places where I would expect it to go. So then we did my test where I said, okay, Google, what sound does a pig make? Very similar traffic. Then I repeated the test for the Google, um, both being silent and the TV on, and while it does have more traffic being sent than what I've seen on the Echo, it's still not um, as much traffic as when I was actually uh, interacting with it. So Google's sending on an order of about five times more, however, it's still low. So for this round, um, let's look at the number in aggregate. Uh, aggregate. These are the, uh, the packet bytes that were sent. So I did my five to sec uh, 10 second test where I actually interacted with it. It was sending quite a, quite a bit more bytes. The, um, the Google Home sends more on average uh, than what Amazon is sending. But um, you can see that in 10 seconds, I don't think, what, what I'm concluding is, I don't think that it's actually listening in all the time. It's listening for that keyword and it's only sending when uh, that keyword is used. So let's move on to the agreement. First up, the Echo Dot. These agreements read like the central theme is to use the device to uh, purchase things. What I found in the agreement is that it actually creates a, a voice profile, but it does allow you to delete that voice profile in the voice recordings that you have. So a few things about the Alexa uh, terms of use. My lord, are these things boring? Uh, this was updated two days before I grabbed this uh, screen capture. However, I can't find an earlier version anywhere. And one of the things that it says directly in the agreement is that we may change, suspend, discontinue Alexa or any part of it at any time without notice. We can amend this agreement at our sole discretion by uh, posting a revised terms on the Amazon.com website. So basically, whatever, you, whatever you're agreeing to, they reserve the right to absolutely change. And I can't find the earlier versions to figure out what I agreed to previously. The only way I can find them is to use the Wayback Machine, which isn't something that I really um, trust that much in the company if they're not going to show me the previous versions. Similarly, on the Google Home Mini, uh, this agreement actually reads like they're covering themselves to track you so that they can sell ads. Um, it's much easier to find the archives here because they have a link directly to all the previous versions. For the Google Home Mini itself, um, the the privacy uh, concerns. I hate these type of documents because you can't really search them unless you go through and expand everything. So on this round, I really wasn't happy with uh, any of the things as far as the agreement. I did like that it allows deletion. But when we go into the next round, we'll find that maybe, maybe deletion doesn't mean what you actually think it does. So now we're moving on to the server side and what's actually saved on the servers. So the Amazon service actually creates a, a voice profile over the time and they, uh, they save all of your voice recordings. Um, what is weird is when I, it, where you actually delete these is over in your consumer Amazon account. It's not in the alexa.amazon.com app. I, and I had to find this through that earlier legal document. It wasn't very easy to find where to do this. And once I got there, the only option is to, to scorch the earth. You have to delete your entire voice profile. You can't delete a single recording. Um, you can just delete the whole thing. I also want to note that I'm an AWS user. And one thing I think that's weird about the AWS uh, agreement is that you really can't fully delete your account. Uh, they, they keep your name, your address, and your payment information in case you ever want to reopen it later. So this to me is kind of uh, uh, um, scary, I guess. So for the Google Home Mini, uh, Google has quite granular saving of all of your stuff. You can go and see your activity on my activity in a, in a in like a timeline type of format. So here we can see the questions that we are asking it. Uh, what sound does a, um, a pig make? Um, what sound, what does a horse sound like? 
and I can mark a single recording for deletion. So this is kind of a timeline type of format, but don't get that confused with what Google also has, uh, which is maps.timeline. If you're allowing Google to track you on your device, you can go and basically see an entire timeline of everywhere you've ever been. I don't have this particular feature on. This is not mine. I grabbed this link for uh, this picture from the internet. So back to my activity. Um, it's not only your voice stuff here. It's all of your Google profile related to your data, your searches, your browser uh, usage, everything. In fact, you can download your archive of 35 different products. In um, the default is two gigabyte uh, zip files. So I went ahead and did this. And nearly six hours later, I was presented with seven archives. So roughly about 15 gigs worth of data on the last 10 years about myself. And one of the things that you'll find here is deletion doesn't necessarily mean what you think it is. Uh, people have found that emails that they've deleted show up directly in these archives. So it's not even like it's marked for deletion, like they're um, not going to give it back to you and it's just on their servers. It is still completely retrievable. So if you want to freak yourself out, uh, this uh, Twitter link is awesome. You can go to a bunch of things and see all the things that Google is storing about you. Uh, this particular Twitter user, uh, Dylan Curran, is uh, actually pretty funny. Um, and he's got a great podcast that I, I recommend. So in this round, I'm not happy with uh, either of the devices. Um, the deletion is not really clear, and it doesn't mean exactly uh, what I would expect. So now that we've been through the entire ecosystem of how everything fits together, I do want to look at one, uh, one more last thing. Um, the way that we expect this to work based on what we've been told. So March 2016 in the New York Times, what we've been told is it doesn't stream anything without using the wake word, right? So we're at um, March 16. The, um, it doesn't stream anything without using the wake word, and it has a physical mute button that electronically disconnects the microphone. But as with all uh, groundbreaking breaking technologies, there is no doubt we're entering new territory here. About a year later, March 2017, uh, from the Tech Times, at the present, uh, the third-party Alexa device only performs a single verification check deter to determine if someone indeed uttered Alexa. But thanks to the new verification feature, the device can now send the audio to Amazon servers to make sure that it really hears the right wake word. So what this means is, initially what we thought was, it's just listening for um, Alexa on the microphone here, and then it's not going to send anything unless it hears that. Now it's listening for Alexa, and if it thinks it hears something close to Alexa, because they're having a lot of issues with the, uh, uh, things similar to Alexa being the wake word, so now it's sending the wake word and possibly whatever happens right after that up to the servers to verify, and then not responding unless it actually um, is verified that it's a wake word. I don't know what that button was. Light moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. U.S. Patent Office, three months later after that last um, uh, Tech Times article. This was filed uh, June 12, 2017, and it was reviewed by the Patent Office on November 9, 2017. Um, so this is what's referred to as the voice sniffer uh, algorithm patent. So I'm going to go ahead and read this section. Uh, in one embodiment, voice sniffer algorithm can um, cause a snippet or portion of the audio including and or immediately following the trigger word to be captured for analysis. The audio snippet um, can be of any appropriate length or size such as corresponding to an amount of time, e.g. five seconds, and an amount of data, e.g. up to five megabytes, up to a pause of voice data in the audio stream, or any other such determining factor. In some embodiments, uh, the rolling buffer has other such data can be used to also capture a portion of the voice data immediately prior to the trigger word to attempt to provide context as discussed elsewhere herein. 
And someone bought emits these audio snippets. Oh, I read the wrong one. Anyways, what it's doing is it's not listening for Alexa anymore. What it's listening for is the words like I like or I love or I hate. Basically sentimental words. And then it's looking for anything that happens five seconds or up to a pause after that. So it, this is where we step into, this is listening all the time. It's listening for what you're um, actually saying. And it's uh, actually picking those things up and looking, um, looking to create uh, future ads for you based on that. So I also want to bring into uh, the discussion the size of these companies. Uh, in 2017, Google actually employed uh, 73,000 people. Amazon employs 566,000. We compare that to the population of Des Moines. Des Moines has 215,000 people. So Amazon has twice as many people that are actually uh, working for it. So a couple of years ago, there was a lot of uh, commotion about smart TVs that they were uh, constantly living, uh, listening in and trying to figure out like what, what it is uh, that you were saying and sending that information back to a separate nation state from, than the state that you are um, uh, like currently in. I believe it was Samsung and I believe that the data was going um, overseas. So I don't want to be an alarmist about uh, any of these things. I tried not to use a title that was as outlandish as the ones that I've seen quite a bit. I just wanted to analyze the actual traffic that's being sent. At this point, I feel like um, the devices are for the most part safe. They're not uh, overstepping their boundaries, but I think that it's going to escalate over the next couple of years. There's this analogy of um, a frog and um, something about boiling water, which I've heard is totally not true. Uh, I think that frogs are a little bit smarter than that. They do end up uh, eventually uh, jumping out. Um, however, it is interesting that what we've seen in uh, the media and what's been brought through the tech um, community is that initially we were told only the wake word. And now we're um, moving on to, well, we'll take the wake word and a little bit of information after that. And now we're moving towards um, a patent where we'll take sentimental words and then take a little bit of information after that. That being said, I'm not really that scared. We're probably still going to use it in my house. Um, here's my daughter again. You didn't hear at the end, she said, oh no, this broken. <laughs> so I think they have a long way to go uh, on trying to pick up the way that a two-year-old talks. And that's actually what I hope um, they move on to and, and solve, because that would help our family out a lot. Uh, you should be able to find me in some way uh, on AaronBlythe.org. I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter and all of those things. Um, and that's all I have. Anybody have any questions? Thoughts? Can you try blocking any of those domains that the data is going out to just to see what happens if it would function. That's the next step. The the SB scorecard one, I do want to just block that using like a pie hole or something to so that like stuff doesn't go out there. Because they don't they provide a way to not send it, but the way doesn't work. So I'm just curious if it even function when you do that, if it would detect that. I don't know. That that would be interesting. Um, for like for the voice analysis, could it is it like really possible to do that on a device that small and still make it affordable? Or the reason that they're sending a lot of it not just to collect the data, but to do the voice analysis on the servers? Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing about all of these. Is I don't know that they pick the best words for the wake word. Alexa is, um, the interesting part is when I first started working on this, I worked on a team and one of, one of the four people on that team was named Alexa. She's the only person I've met in my life named Alexa. 
Uh, and it was interesting because uh, at that time we all had to change our wake word to like Echo, which was the only other possibility. Now I think there's four. There's computer, Echo, Alexa, and if someone help me out, I don't know what the other one is. Um, I think that it can do the, the analysis pretty well of, of that, but they did run into problems where other words were triggering it. So I don't know. I don't know what it is that they're doing on the server that they, they can't do locally. The other thing that I have noticed is I haven't really ran updates on this. I don't know if it's pushing updates directly because I've never, like, every other device I have across all of the, the tech stuff, you have to sit there, even like my Fire TV, um, everything, you have to go do the annoying updates. Um, so that's another thing I want to look into. Try but I. Update. What's that? Try oh, we'll plug it back in. Just nobody order. Um, Paper towels or anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, another question over here? Yeah. Um, was it one of the two specific companies that had the patent around sentiment analysis, or are they both doing some kind of? Uh, and you may have mentioned this in the talk. Uh, no, I didn't. I hid that slide. Uh, the, the specific company that had the one that I went into was Amazon. Funny you should say that. Uh, I just wanted to focus on the one patent instead of reading you a bunch of patents. And obviously, I, one of the things I just read the wrong section because I'm dumb. Uh, this tweet here actually goes through the names of them. I did have some trouble actually um, tracking that down. I usually go to Google Patents, which is where I try to read all patents um, just because I like the format a lot better than the USPTO site. The problem with Google Patents is that I think it only shows or it only seems searchable if the patent's been granted. So if you uh, have ever been to the USPTO side on the left hand side, they have the patents that have been granted. On the right hand side, they have the patents that um, have been um, submitted and you can do the search that way. The only way I could get to it was the USPTO side. So through this thread uh, by Dylan Curran, he goes through a bunch of the patents but he doesn't have direct links to them. But from those, I was able to go read um, the patents. Google does have a bunch right now. The other interesting thing I, I saw when I was reading through on Google patents was that voice and voice XML has been something all, going all the way back to like 2001 that Amazon has been having patents on. Now, the technology has changed. It's just been in the last couple of years that this has exploded uh, for the vo voice analysis for these type of devices. But they've been trying different things for um, over 15 years now. So. Thank you. Good question. I'm just curious if you noticed if any of the data that was sent was sent unencrypted, just plain text. Um, all of the domains that I was uh, looking at, the, the data was flowing over HTTPS. I did look for some of those because I thought that would, that would be interesting, but I didn't see anything that was just over HTTP. Now, I didn't do any type of analysis where I tried to like uh, uh, unencrypt anything, but what I saw in Wireshark was it was, it was mostly um, encrypted data when I was just kind of going through the, um, all the requests that were made. I haven't. The price point on that's uh, still a lot. I have the 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 big uh, Echo from the beginning. And I think the only reason I got that was because I was reimbursed because I was doing research for work uh, on like writing um, what do they call skills. And uh, I for per home personal use, I wait until the the second or third generation ones come out and they're cheaper. Oh, Alexa, update. Here's your flash briefing. Alexa, stop. In things to try. Alexa, stop. <laughs> so that reads your flash briefing. 
you would get a bunch of NPR articles uh, here in a minute. <laughs> Anything else or is lunchtime? Yeah, it's lunchtime.